In Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, here I am before you again on this another blessed new day. Lord, as I am about to teach your word and pray, cause me to speak nothing but what you have quickened in my spirit, that at the end only your name will be glorified and your people empowered with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that will make them excel and turn them into the wonder of their world, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As believers, we must understand that God's wish and desire for us, His creation, is joy, happiness, abundant life, an abundance of all the good things of life, and any other things that we would need for good and healthy living. And things that would make our lives worthwhile and worthy of living. Hence the Lord Jesus Christ says in John, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Here Jesus made it clear that he came to restore life's abundance, which had eluded man till then due to the activities of the devil, whom he referred to as the thief. However, we have got to know and understand that despite the restoration of abundant life by Christ through his finished works on the cross, one does not automatically possess and start enjoying the abundant life. As humans, we have got some roles to play to make our freedom and restoration a reality. You have got to unlock the doors that will give you access to the realms of joy, happiness, and abundance that have been restored and given back to man by God through Christ Jesus. To be able to successfully unlock your door of access to joy, happiness, and abundance, knowledge is very crucial and vital, and as a matter of fact, an indispensable tool in the actualization of true joy, happiness, and abundance. Hence Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, what is the truth about true joy, happiness, and abundance? True joy and happiness come from our knowledge that we are safe, secure, and free. The safety here includes safety from physical and non-physical harms. And security here includes the security of life and possessions, and freedom here includes, among others, physical and financial freedom. Incidentally, only through God will one be able to access all these things. And only through faith and knowledge can we access these virtues. The Lord Jesus Christ puts it this way in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. What the Lord Jesus Christ is actually saying here is that our joy and happiness should always be based on our knowledge that he has overcome the world, the devil, and that we are no longer under the bondage of the devil, which the Bible refers to in other scriptures as the God of this world. So therefore, our joy should always be based on our faith and knowledge of this truth and not on the seemingly temporary troubles, as they are meant to usher us into our realms of abundance and higher levels of joy and happiness. So actually, as believers, we are together victors with Christ and have been translated to high places with him beyond the reach and dominion of the devils. The Bible puts it this way in Ephesians chapter 2, from verses 6 to 10, and it says. Reading from the New Living Translation Bible. Verse 6. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. 
He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. And in Romans chapter 6, verses 4 to 19. The Apostle Paul explained it further this way. It says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead, and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live, do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. This knowledge is the panacea and cure for worries, anxiety, and everything that tends to deny and deprive us of freedom, enduring peace, joy, and happiness. The Bible says, in John chapter 13, verse 17, If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your gracious offer of the Lord Jesus Christ, who through his redemptive sacrifice, we now have and can boast of life in all its abundance. Blessed Lord, I ask that you bring your peace that passes all understanding into my heart and grant me all the rights and privileges of my redemption. Cause me to always abound in the abundance of all the good things of life in accordance with your word of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 which says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Lord, let all these blessings you have given us become my daily realities, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father, Lord, for hearing and for answering me, for in the precious name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen.